Hi, my name is Anthony DeMombro, and I'm a bow maker located in the Detroit area. In this video, we will be building a foray, which is a traditional bow maker's hand drill that is driven with a quote unquote bow. We will be going the traditional route by using a repurposed fencing foil strung up with a nylon guitar string to power this drill. Not only does this tool offer smooth and safe drilling operations, but perhaps more importantly is the feedback it offers to the operator. It's an extremely sensitive tool and really prevents the splitting or damaging of the stick of a bow when forming the nipple or drilling for the screw. The foray is also used for starting the hair mortise in the head and frog, as well as for drilling the recesses on the cheek of the frog for the pearl or Parisian eyes. The basic design includes a pair of pillow block bearings, a Jacob's chuck, wooden base, steel shaft, and Delrin drive spindle. I have detailed plans and procedures in my book, Toolmaking for Bowmakers. There is a link to it in the description, as well as a link to my blog where I cover an array of tools used in the Bowmakers workshop. Here we are facing mild steel for the drive shaft and center drilling to accept the center. We will be turning the shaft between centers so it can be swapped end for end with essentially no run out. Additionally, the spindle can be removed for test fits in the bearings and replaced in the lathe again with no error. Here I'm using some layout fluid to lay out the section for the threads we will be forming to accept the Jacob's chuck as well as the collar for the chuck to seat up against. Later we will be milling a couple flats on this stop to accept a tappet wrench. In the chuck, I quickly true up a center and mount the drive shaft with lathe dogs. The diameter is turned down to have a clearance fit with the ID of the pillow block bearings. Cleaning up and polishing the surface should make it easier to install the bearing on the shaft. The shaft is then flipped end for end and the major diameter of the threads are turned. My collet chuck has very minimal runout and I opt to turn the threads right in a collet. Using layout fluid, I do a scratch pass to ensure my lathe is set up correctly to cut the threads. Everything looks good, so I proceed to cut the threads. This is my first time actually cutting threads on the lathe. I've generally used a tailstock die holder, but uh, I probably should have run the lathe a little faster to get a better surface finish, but I got a good working thread, so it'll do. After test fitting the truck, it has a nice snug fit, so a light cleanup to remove any burrs or sharp edges, and this should allow for smooth threading. Here I'm facing the threaded section to length and chamfering the first couple of threads. We want the chuck to seat firmly against the collar. Using the mill, I'm adding two flat sections to this collar to allow for the use of a tappet wrench to install and remove the chuck if that becomes necessary in the future. Moving on to the drive spindle, I'm using 1 inch Delrin. This stuff is super easy to machine and takes a fantastic surface finish right from the tool bit. I know I have quite a bit of material sticking out of the chuck, but this material doesn't clear the back of the collet. I'll be using a live center in the tailstock to support the cuts anyway. I've laid out the sections with some layout fluid and I'm just going to town with the triangular tool bit to create some nice chamfers on the interior surfaces. Using the cutoff tool, collars are created to allow for the bearings to seat up against the drive spindle without it rubbing against the bearing housing. With the OD turning complete, I drill a hole for the internal bore. I remove the layout fluid with some alcohol and part off the drive spindle with a cutoff tool. Even though this drive spindle will have a snug fit on the drive shaft, we will still drill and tap a hole for a set screw to secure it to the drive shaft. Moving on to the base of the foray, I cut up some dimension hardwood on the bandsaw. 
Here, I'm laying out where the supports will go, and we'll be doing a visual check of the assembled drill. Everything seems good, so I glue the supports to the base and double check alignment once clamped. With the glue fully cured, I pre trill the holes for the screws that will secure the bearings to the base. Now I'm just test fitting with some screws and everything seems good. Over the next couple of days I'll be applying a finish of tongue oil which is a durable and nice looking finish. Moving on to the final assembly, I use some Loctite on the drive shaft to snug up the fit of the bearings. The drive spindle will really hold everything in place. The little collars that were turned will seat firmly up against the bearings and tightening the set screw will lock it all into place. I'll now spend a little bit of time making sure everything lines up perfectly. Traditionally, the foray is driven by a fencing foil and some cord. The foil can be heated up with a propane torch in a small area and easily bent with some pliers. I take care to keep everything aligned and not to heat too large of an area as this will remove some spring from the foil. I'm determining a length for the string that will put a bit of tension on the foil and help the string firmly grab the drive spindle. With the bow complete, the 4A is now fully operational. Here I'm performing a test cut with a shop made Parisian eye cutter, which is also outlined in my book, so don't forget to check out the link in the description below. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more content related to bows and bow making. Thanks for watching.